the end of the world happened pretty much the way we thought it would. Too many people and not enough resources. I'm not going to question why humanity would march to its own demise when it sees an avoidable catastrophe in its future. I do know after all that as wonderful people can be, largely they are slaves to routine and unable to question their grasp on reality. It's a constant offered against an animal that seems unpredictable in nature. One question I have pondered though was who started the war, and by that I mean the great war that ended that current phase of humanity. Who took the decision that at the press of a button they would end the world as people knew it. To understand the gravity of that decision you have to understand what nuclear weapons are in this world. You see the Fallout universe mirrors our own reality until around 1945, meaning the little boy nuclear bomb was dropped on Hiroshima killing an estimated 135,000 and that the fat man nuclear bomb was also dropped on Nagasaki snuffing out an additional 50,000. This brought America's slaughter total of men, women and children to around 185,000 using nuclear bombs alone. Now this information is vital because although traditional media today would have you shitting in your pants for fear of a nuclear Armageddon brought on by crazy people in Iran or North Korea, you have to remember one nation has been batshit crazy enough to use nuclear weapons not once but twice. So for us it doesn't rule out that America was first to strike. Although you have to know that when the Great War happened, America wasn't the only nation with nuclear weapons. Most nations now fearing the same thing that happened to Japan might happen to them started to stockpile nuclear bombs. Also nuclear technology had moved on since then, meaning the bombs were much more devastating than those used in 1945. This led to an arms stalemate because if any nation launched a nuclear strike first, that nation itself could expect to be wiped off the face of the earth as they get hit with a nuclear counter strike. This logically rules out the use of nuclear weapons as a first means of attack, instead resulting in the bombs becoming the tool of last resort. So if no nation was clearly facing defeat on the scale that they were looking to destroy the whole planet, who else would want to initiate a global thermonuclear war game? Perhaps a computer, we do after all have one that fits the bill. Found in Fallout 2 and going by the name Skynet, a name taken from the film Terminator which saw an artificially intelligent computer become self-aware and then try to wipe out humanity. The date of Skynet in Fallout 2 becoming self-aware, 2075, do make it a candidate. I vaguely remember dialogue from Skynet saying it did launch, but I'm not 100% sure. It was a long time ago I played Fallout 2, so I have no proof to bring you on that today. Although it being set up in a secret military base and having the ability to change records still don't rule it out completely. If you're wondering what happened to Skynet, then you need not worry. This AI downloaded its memories to a brain, a cybernetic brain at that, and got itself a robot body to make it mobile. Go watch my Is Courier 6 an Android with fresh eyes if you were a skeptic by the way. But do we have someone else that could be the possible cause of Fallout's nuclear Armageddon? I'm going to give you a 4 minute warning now, that the information shared from this point on is going to be like a nuclear bomb in your mind and that the radioactive fallout will mutate your perception of the game's storyline forever. Did aliens start the great fallout war? Well, let's find out as we dig a little deeper. First, we have to establish if aliens exist. Not in our universe, we know aliens exist in our universe, but have alien life forms been seen in the Fallout landscape? Well, as it turns out, aliens have been in the Fallout games from the early doors. Take this one special encounter of a crashed alien ship from the very first Fallout game. Amongst the ship's wreckage can be seen two alien skeletons. Presumably their corpses have been picked clean by the wild creatures that frequent the wastes. One of these bodies has a velvet painting of Elvis Presley, which is a bit of an in-game joke at those crazy magazines that would print stupid articles like Elvis is still alive but was abducted by aliens. In fact, some people see the aliens included in the Fallout series to be a non-canon joke type of easter egg content, but let's just get some details before we make up our mind. You see, the second alien body has an alien blaster in its possession, a gun that's popped up in Fallouts 1, 2, 3 and Fallout New Vegas but it's when you examine the crash ship itself we get a clue. 
The message reads, property of area 51, return if found. Right here we have a connection between a secret government military base and actual aliens with actual alien tech. So enough of this foreplay, I'm going balls deep into your mind next with this big piece. But don't worry, afterwards we can cuddle and I'll share a few special things most have overlooked. Welcome to Mothership Zeta, a DLC for Fallout 3 that sees your character kidnapped onto an alien spaceship waiting to be experimented on. On board we learn the aliens have been abducting people from Earth for a long time, and I do mean a long time. Audio recordings found on the ship tell the tale of one man that was taken in 1697. People have also reported information gathered from the official game guide that the samurai Toshiro Kago was taken even earlier, around 1603, but either way we've now established they've been at this for a while. As for their intent, well that becomes clear quickly in the game. You see, the aliens haven't just been stealing people from Earth and freezing them. They've also been experimenting on them, severing limbs in gruesome testing areas, finding out how people tick. Again, through an audio recording, we discover that the aliens have been changing humans into abominations. A part human, part alien hybrid that is hostile to all but its own kind, even the aliens who created it. Humans aren't the only things the aliens have weaponized. We come across Giddy Up Buttercup, a robotic horse toy aimed at little girls. The aliens reacting excited to a young girl happily recognizing the horse, and a test room full of dead test subjects around one of these mechanical equestrians strongly suggests it being a Trojan horse type of device. None of this is evidence however, more of a hint at intent. Our evidence that the aliens could have started the war comes from a strange recording. Strange in that no human voice is heard. So how did I get this information? Well, from the subtitles. They detail how a person, presumably a soldier who had access to codes necessary for the US to launch a nuclear strike, was being mind probed to extract the information. So it's entirely possible they use these codes by controlling him or some other means and thus start the great nuclear war. I'll be honest, if you were totally understanding all my points, you took all that like a champ. If you're a little lost, then I'll squeeze it in slowly with a quick summary. We have aliens that have been abducting people for around 600 years. Gruesome proof that aliens have hostile intent, evidence that aliens had the codes necessary to launch some of the planet's nuclear weapons as accessed by mind control, and lastly that people who overlook easter eggs having any bearing on the game story are complete tossers. Just to give you a chance of understanding how hard coded this theory is, we're going to look at a seemingly unrelated piece of information from Fallout 1. To ensure your vault safety, you have to destroy the source of the super mutants, which leads you to the master an amorphous blob of a creature, terribly twisted by exposure to the forced evolutionary virus, or FEV for short. But before you leap into this head-on showdown, you chance across four psychers. A psyker is how the game refers to people with psychic powers if you weren't aware. Anywho, one of them by the name of Gideon can give you access to a psychic nullifier, which prevents you from taking damage from the master's psychic attacks. It blocks telepathic signals, and the description of this device, I kid you not, is possibly the product of an alien technology. But you don't have to be an OG Fallout player to have seen this device. It's the same worn by a psychic kid called the Forecaster in Fallout New Vegas. The psychic nullifier isn't the only alien tech on the planet however. Like already mentioned, we've seen alien blasters throughout the series. It's widely thought the advanced tech like robot sentries and energy weapons are of alien origin. Another piece of evidence is found on a man named Reed Underwood's computer, waiting to be examined on Mothership Zeta, detailing how his group named Carrie Verum, Latin translation being Seek the Truth, were looking to expose a conspiracy. The vibe these notes give you are of a group that believes in alien conspiracies. The details tell how they broke into a secret base, stole an experimental energy pistol, only to be hunted down and killed off. It turns out one of their group was a double agent looking to end any possible threat to government secrets getting out. Now you could look at it that it was the government or enclave trying to keep secret military tech out of enemy hands if you want, but the details at the end of this log show Reed was looking to bury the safe and terminal in the desert where he thought no one would find it. So how did it end up in the aliens possession? Did the enclave kill Reed, take the terminal and safe only to have the aliens take it from them? or? Did Reed get to bury it in a remote area of the desert and the aliens somehow locked onto its location? 
Now I think it's time we pieced all this puzzle together. Trigger warning for all you robots who need everything spelling out because you have the imagination of a toothbrush. It's clear from the advanced set we see in the game that these are modelled off alien hardware. So whether this is just tech salvaged from crashed recon ships or is part of some government and alien conspiracy is a bit up in the air. You see this in the energy weapons, robotic drones and not forgetting the Chinese stealth technology which bears some similarities to the inertia suppression field as worn by the aliens. We do see the aliens are hostile to humans and seem to have an invading plan what with their Trojan horses and biologically altered abominations. The aliens are totally reliant on technology as detailed by Nubduck T so they would be aware that if they mounted a head-on assault themselves they could be beaten. This is why they created the much tougher abomination and plan to control it through telepathy. It would give them the tactical advantage they would need to tip the scales of battle in their favour. The humans, aware of the aliens ability of telepathy, have gotten their hands on their own protection from having their minds controlled in the form of the psychic nullifier, as worn previously to protect the vault dweller from an FEV riddled master. Again, the FEV, a virus that changes the subject on a biological level, something we've seen the aliens do themselves. There's too much in the way of evidence, too much in the way of coincidence for this just to be ignored as some jokey easter egg. Has the US government, or for that matter, any of the governments around the world been in a secret alliance with these aliens? Or have the aliens been manipulating events on Earth to meet their own dark needs? Did aliens start the great fallout war? The truth is out there. Out where? <laughs> but if you're not an alien, by subscribing, and I'll see you next time as we dig a little deeper into another mystery.